Hello everybody and welcome back to Today. Hello everybody and welcome back to Hello everybody and welcome back to Turning Tuesday. On a, <laughs> on a recent trip to Yandles, I picked up some Oh yeah, go on then. On a recent trip to Yandles, I picked up some leadwood and also some Rapallo lacewood. And I thought I would start making another little batch of these tiny little mallets. Uh, so you guys can buy them. I've had a lot of requests to do it up until now. Um, yeah, this is turning Tuesday. Let's get to it. <laughs> So I managed to pick up a grand total of four of these big old blocks of leadwood, one there, and then we got three up here as well. I should be able to... Sorry. I should be able to... I tried to do it quietly. I hate you. We're gonna chop these in half in order to make two heads. And then, like I said, we've got this lovely block of Rapallo lacewood here as well. Can't see the figure on it at the moment. Um, actually, there's a little bit on that face there. But this is stunning when it's, uh, when it's turned and when you get a perfectly quarter sawn piece as well. Mm -hmm. You know we did two trips into the uh, sawmill. Oh yeah. The first trip I picked this all up and then on the second trip there was a guy looking through all the exact same pieces. Oh really? I was like, yeah, it's a shame they ain't got any this year. <laughs> I wonder if he's watching. <laughs> did he not? I can't remember. I think he said he did. Sorry, mate. Yeah, there's a guy looking for him. He's like, yeah, I swear they had some three inch uh, three inch thick slabs of it last year. I'm like, yeah, I thought they did as well. It's in the back of my car. So I remember it being an issue before where the forcing of it was not long enough to actually get through the block of wood that I used. So this time I'm gonna attack it in a slightly different way because previously I drilled as deep as I could and then clamped this in the collet, but like right up at the top like that. So it was a little bit precarious in there. This time I'm gonna drill down as far as I can and then just mount that on the lathe as it is, turn the outside and then hopefully in turning down that diameter, it should expose the hole on the opposite side. That's the plan anyway. If not, I guess I can just finish it off with a power drill later on as it is. Okay, so quick update on where we're at with these mallets. I've got the cylinder head all turned and is being cut off with the Japanese saw. I've got this little bit left over, which I am going to cut off after mounting the other half into the gripper jaws. So cut that off with the Japanese saw and then I'll be putting the convex face on it and then the concave face on the other side. So convex is mainly for hitting chisels and things where you want to minimize deflection off the handle of the chisel. And then the convex one, I think I've got these all mixed up. The one that bumps outwards is mainly for assembling joints and things like that, where you don't want the corners of the mallet to accidentally bruise the material. By having a shallow dome on it, then it means that you can be pretty precise with your tapping and also minimize bruising. Now, 
Quick plug here slash thanks to my top patrons. Since making these heads, I've put a post on Patreon giving them priority access to purchasing these mallets as a way of thanking them slash you if you happen to be watching this for your support. Um, as a result, five of which have already gone. So at the end of this video, providing no one else shows their interest between now and then, there are only three available. So this is something that I am going to be doing in the future. I do plan on making a lot more mallets and there is other tools in the works as well. If you watched a previous live stream of mine, you will know what that is. But yeah, if you want priority access to those tools before they go out to the general public, then that is the place to do it. And as I say, that is just a token of my thank you for your ongoing support. Moving on, let's get these mounted in the chuck, turn this opposite face and get these heads finished. Okay, heads are all sorted, didn't take too long. Ideally, I would have done it quicker, but there we go. So, lace wood. I'm gonna cut this to size. Can't wait to see what it looks like. This stuff just, I, I said it earlier, it looks stunning when you actually get the, um, when you get some of the quarter sawn patterns on this. Let's get it cut up on the lathe, turn a bit and have a look. And yet again, my inability of being able to properly fit a tenon into a mortise strikes again. This, like, it's not bad. It's probably a little less than half a millimetre away from being a snug fit, but it, you know, it'll be okay to glue. I know it'll be okay to glue. Like, that will definitely hold just fine, but it's just annoying. It's so difficult to get that a tight fit. At the moment, I am setting my calipers to the exact width of the forcing bit that I used, and then using those around the piece in order to get the exact size using a passing tool. But I'm convinced that when I get it down to size, you know, well, I'm not convinced, I know it's, what I do is I buzz over it with 80 grit thinking, yeah, a quick swipe of 80 grit won't be too bad. But it takes off so much more material than I expect every single time, and thus gives me a loose fit like that. The handle on this one is a little bit stumpy as well. Some of these are slightly larger heads and some of them are slightly smaller. They all pretty much weigh the same, but I've put this stumpy handle onto a smaller head in order to keep the proportions there because when I put it on one of the larger ones, it'll look completely off, but like, I'm happy with that. Well, I'm not happy with it. It's satisfactory, I suppose. Mallet number two is better. Still a bit of a loose fit as it goes in, but it is binding up towards the end. The gap is no more than quarter of a millimetre this time, but uh, I mean, at least it's getting better. We will go with that. We'll go with that for the time being. Next one. Third one, spot on. Well, well, kind of. When I made it, it was probably about half a millimeter, quarter of a millimeter too big. So it was really like it was sticking as I was trying to push it in. And I remember from making this last mallet that I got it a really tight fit. And when I put glue on it, it became a whole new level of tight. So what I did with this one was got it in as far as I could and then looked at the handle to see where it was rubbing attacked that with 80 grit and then buzzed over that with 180 grit afterwards. And it's got to a point now where 
it like it's there it's a lovely fit there is no gaps at the top no gaps at the bottom very happy with that five more to go i'm not going to do these updates between each of the mallets now i'm just going to get them done and we'll do an overall thing at the end because i'm kind of a bit i'm a bit glazed over by now there's too much like too much spinning going on in front of me maybe i'm feeling dizzy probably shouldn't be on the lathe anyway <laughs> All right, so I've got six mallets done now and they are looking very, very nice. Happy with how they've come out. In the spirit of using more of the timber on this top shelf so that I'm not just hoarding stuff as I've been doing the past few months and years, I'm trying to get through it and I've just come across this little block of panga panga that I've got and also some wild mango, which will make some nice handles for these remaining two heads that I've got. Panga Panga I'm particularly worried about because it's very similar to Wenge and again if you watched the previous video where I was making bowls out of Wenge it was disgusting absolutely disgusting dusty smelly splitty explodey in some cases it was just not nice timber to work with the only thing I'm holding out for this is the fact that I'm going to be working on side grain as opposed to end grain like I would on a bowl so we'll see if it's any different this can be my informal review on Panga Panga and uh, yeah, we'll see what we'll see what it turns out like. Turns out like. Turn out, no. Right, and there we go. Eight mallets complete, six in lacewood, one in wench, one in mango, looking spectacular. I'm very happy with how they've turned out. There are a few things which of course I would do differently. The main one being, I would pre-finish the mallet head before shoving that handle in there with all of that glue squeeze out. If this head was pre-finished, then that squeeze out wouldn't stick to the wood as much and it'd be much easier to clean it up. Cleaning around there, getting rid of all that excess glue and around this top bit, pain in the bum. Absolute pain in the bum, but I mean, overall, it's a mallet. Certainly packs a punch. It's gonna do, yeah, it's certainly gonna do its job. So as always, guys, thank you very much for watching and a special thank you to the Patreons who pre-ordered these tools. If you want to get first dibs on this type of thing in the future, then Patreon is the place to do it, but they will eventually, I'm, I can't actually set a date, but they will eventually be available to everyone else at some point in the future. But yeah, as I said, thank you very much for watching. If you haven't already, please like the video. Also, don't forget to subscribe and I will see you in the next video.